Hello students! Today we will learn one of the most useful things that you can use in the real world and that's the Pythagorean Theorem. It is important to know that when using the Pythagorean Theorem it only applies to right triangles. So to review a right triangle is a triangle with one right angle. And remember that a right angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Okay, so the use of the Pythagorean theorem, what it is, it shows the relationship between the three sides of any right triangle. And it's most used when you know the lengths of two sides of the three sides, and you're trying to find the length of the third side. Okay, so what is the Pythagorean Theorem? The Pythagorean Theorem states that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so what does this mean? First of all, we need to know where the legs and the hypotenuse are. In a right triangle, first of all, you know you have a right triangle because you see the little square. That means a 90 degree angle. The two sides that make that right angle, those are called the legs. Okay, you have two legs. A right triangle has two legs. The other side, the third side, which is across from the right angle, it's also the longest side of any right triangle, is called the hypotenuse. It's kind of a funny word. Okay, so those are the parts of the right triangle. And the Pythagorean theorem says that if I take, if I square the two legs and add them together, it will equal the square of the hypotenuse. Now the legs have, we use letters to represent the legs. We use A and B. And technically, A is the shorter leg and B is the longer leg. But if you get these mixed up, it's not a big deal. What is really important that you get right is that we use C to represent the hypotenuse. That one always has to be the hypotenuse. And you can locate C because if you draw an arrow from your right angle, it will point at side C. So make sure you always know where side C is first. So the Pythagorean states, if I take those two legs, the A and the B, and I square them, and then I add them, that will equal that hypotenuse if it's squared. So this is very important that you know this, and it's very, very, very useful. So the way that you use the Pythagorean Theorem, you take whatever two legs you know, maybe you know A and B, or B and C, or A and C, and you plug them into this formula, and then you can solve the formula for the other variable, and that will represent the length of the side that you don't know. So let's try a few. So here's a right triangle. We are finding x. We know sides 3 and 7. So whenever you're doing Pythagorean Theorem, problems, you're trying to find a missing side of a right triangle. You always want to label your sides with A, B, and C first. I always like to start with C. Remember, C is going to be across from your right angle. So in this case, X is C. Remember that C is also your longest side, so visually it lo should look longest. The A and B are the two legs, which are the other two sides. Generally, the A is the shorter side and the B is the longer leg. But if you get these mixed up, it's not going to affect your answer, okay? So here's how you do it. You're going to go ahead and start by writing down the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared, and you should always know two sides. So you're going to plug in the values of whatever two sides you know. We know a and b. So we're going to put 3 for a, and we'll put 7 for b. Okay. Once you plug those in, you're going to simplify, and you're going to try to isolate the other variable, and that will represent the side you're trying to find. So let's simplify that left side. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 7 squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. And that equals c squared. 9 plus 49 is 58. That equals c squared. Now, we're trying to find the value of c, not of c squared. So what this means, this means that something times something, or c times itself, equals 58. So I need to figure out, well, what is that something? And the way that you do that is you take the square root. We're going to take the square root of both sides of our equation. When you take the square root of something that is squared, they undo each other. They're opposite operations. So on the left side, the square root of c squared is just c. On the right side, we've got square root of 58. We don't want to put this into our calculator and get a decimal um, approximation because that won't be an exact answer. To get an exact answer, now we're going to simplify the radical like you learned in the last lesson. So you're going to take your 58, we're going to do our upside down division, we're going to think of a prime number that will divide into 58. I always like to start with 2. 2 goes into 58 uh, 29 times. Nope. Yes, 29 times. And then I think, okay, well, what's a number that can divide into 29? 29 is prime. Remember, you're going to stop when your two numbers are prime. So I look at my two outside numbers, 2 and 29. I don't have any pairs. So what that means, that means the square root of 58 is already simplified. So this is the length of the third side, square root of 58. Let's try another. Okay, we're doing the same thing. This time, it looks like the side we're trying to find is one of the legs. We're going to start by labeling the sides A, B, and C. I always start with C. It's a side across from the right angle. So this 6 squared of 2 is our C. The A and B are the other two. Not super important which one you label A and which one you label B. And then we're going to go ahead and write our Pythagorean theorem. We'll plug in what we know. We know that A has a value of 6. B, we're calling X. And C is 6 square roots of 2. Now whenever we have a number like this and we're squaring it, we need to put the whole thing in parentheses so that we'll remember to square the entire number. And we'll do that in just a second. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify and then isolate that X. 6 squared is 36. On the right side, what we have is 6 squared of 2 squared. So I'm going to go off to the side really quick. What that means is 6 squared of 2 times 6 squared of 2. Whenever you multiply radicals, you're going to multiply the two outside numbers together, and then you'll multiply the two inside numbers together. The outside numbers, 6 times 6 is 36. Put your square root symbol. The inside numbers, 2 times 2 is 4. I can simplify this further because the square root of 4 is 2. So this equals 36 times 2, which is 72. So 72 is what 6 squared of 2 squared equals. So I'm going to put a 72 over here. All right. Now to get x squared by itself, we're going to move that 36 to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. x squared equals 72 minus 36 is 36. And then remember, once you get to your variable squared equals, you're going to take the square root of both sides so that we can figure out what x equals. Remember, square root of x squared just equals x. It undoes the square. And square root of 36 is 6. So that missing side has a length of 6. 
Sometimes when we do, um, when we need to use the Pythagorean theorem, it won't be obvious like in the last two examples where you were just given a right triangle. Sometimes you have to look for those right triangles. So we're trying to find this length x over here. If I was to draw a line in here straight down to that side 11 so that it makes a right angle, now I've got a right triangle. So I can use that right triangle with Pythagorean theorem to find that length of x. I just need to make sure that I know the other lengths of the sides of that right triangle. The, the blue line that I just drew should also be the same length as this line over here, so it has a length of 8. This other leg over here should be the difference of the 11 and the 5, so it should have a length of 6, 11 minus 5. So sometimes what I like to do is you can either highlight your right triangle so that you can kind of focus on just that part of the picture, or if you want, you can actually redraw it off to the side. So I've highlighted it so we can just focus on that. Now we're gonna label our sides A, B, and C. C being first. The side across from the right angle is C. So our X is our C, and then our A and B are the six and eight, the other two legs. Let's go ahead and write down our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we'll plug in what we know. a has a length of 6, b has a length of 8, and c we're calling x. One of the mistakes a lot of students do when they're first starting with Pythagorean theorem is they'll forget to write the little squares on each of their numbers. So be careful not to leave those off. It's not a plus b equals c. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, now we're going to try to solve for x. We'll simplify. 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. And that equals x squared. 36 plus 64 is 100. Whenever you get down to the step where you've got variable squared equals a number, you're going to take the square root of both sides of your equation to find the length of just the variable. The square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 100, you should recognize 100 as a perfect square, is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. So the length of that missing side is 10. For this one, we're trying to find the value of x. It looks like we have a picture of a square, and I can tell that because we've got right angles in the corners and all of our sides are congruent. I can see that by my tick marks. So we're trying to find this length x. Well, it belongs to a right triangle. So I'm going to highlight that right triangle so I can focus on it. Because the two sides um, are congruent, I know that this side is also x. And because it's a square, I know that this is a right angle. So let's go ahead and label our sides. The side that we know, or the, sorry, side C, which is across from the right angle, is 5 square roots of 2. Now, the two sides that we don't know, generally you know two sides and you're finding one missing side, but this time we're missing two sides. Since they happen to be the same length, we are in luck. So we can still do this. Let me show you what this is going to look like. Let's go ahead and write our Pythagorean theorem. So if the two sides that you don't know are the same length, you can still use Pythagorean theorem. We're going to replace both a and b with x. And c we're going to replace with 5 square roots of 2. We need to make sure to remember to put that in parentheses so we square the entire number. All right. On the left side, we can combine the x squared and the x squared. So basically, we have 1x squared plus 1x squared. If we combine those like terms, we get 2x squared. On the right, and I'm going to go off to the side, we've got 5 squared to 2 squared or times, excuse me, times itself another 5 squared to 2. Remember, we're going to multiply outside with outside. 5 times 5 is 25. And then inside with inside, 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 part of that will simplify to 2. So 25 times 2 is 50. So 5 squared to 2 squared equals 50. 
Now, normally at this step, we would have just the x squared on one side, but we have a two in front. We can't take the square to both sides until it's just x squared. So to get rid of that two, we're gonna divide both sides by two. So we'll get x squared equals 50 divided by two is 25. Now it is ready to take the square root of both sides. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is five. 25 is a perfect square. So the side length of that square equals five units. For our last example, we don't have a picture. So you know what I'm gonna say, you need to draw a picture. It says find the length of a diagonal of a rectangle with length eight and width four. So that's what I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, length eight, width four. And we need to find the length of a diagonal. So we're gonna draw in a diagonal. And if you remember from rectangles, the diagonals in a rectangle are congruent. So it doesn't matter which rectangles, or sorry, which diagonal I draw. And I also know that I've got right angles here. So this um, diagonal is what we're trying to find. I'm gonna call it X. I do see my right triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it so I can focus on that part of the picture. And then I'm gonna label my A, B, and C. The side across from my right angle is my C. So X is my C. The diagonal that we're trying to find is our unknown. The other two legs are A and B. So let's go ahead and write our Pythagorean theorem. And we'll replace what we know. A is four, B is eight, and C is X. Four squared is four times four, which is 16. Eight squared is eight times eight, which is 64. And that equals X squared. 16 plus 64 equals 80. So 80 equals X squared. So to find the length of X, we need to take the square root of both sides to undo that squared. The square root of x squared is just x. But the square root of 80, we need to make sure that it's simplified. Remember, do not type it into your calculator and get a decimal equivalent. So we're gonna go off to the side and we do our upside down division. A prime number that'll go into 80 is two. Two goes into 80 40 times. A prime number that'll go into 40 is also two. I'm gonna use it again, it goes in 20 times. A prime number that'll go into 20 is also two, it goes in 10 times. A prime number that'll go into 10 is also two, and it goes in five times. And since five is prime, we're gonna go ahead and stop. Then remember, we're gonna circle any pairs that we got. So I have a pair of twos here, a pair of twos here. Each pair counts as one, two. And then we multiply those, remember, to get four. That is now my outside number. My inside number is that five at the bottom that didn't have a pair. So the simplified length of the diagonal of this rectangle is four square roots of five units. All right, bring your questions to class. See you soon.